A lot of the qualities that a product manager brings to the table is passion and curiosity and the ability to rally up a team. A product manager needs to find resourceful ways to make things happen. And that is a personality thing. Welcome to Product Side Stories, the podcast where we reveal the very real and raw lessons learned from product leaders and thinkers all over the world. I'm your host, Nicole Tisch. In this segment, we interview today's trailblazing women in product management. Hello, everybody. I'm Nicole Tisch, your host of our segment, Trailblazing Women in Product Management. And today I am interviewing our guest, Shira Gershoni, Vice President of Product Management at Assurian. Very excited to share her insights and experiences in the dynamic world of product management. So, with that, welcome, Shira. Thank you, Nicole. I'm really, really happy to have a chance to talk to you today about a topic that I'm probably the most passionate about. Oh, fantastic. Then you're a perfect guest for us today. I'm so excited for you um, coming in and spending some time with us. So um, with that, I'll jump right into it because my first question really is so open. It leads us to lots of different conversations and it is never the same answer twice. And that is what led you to product management? Yeah, I, I love telling that story because I think that everybody kind of discovered the world of product management from a different angle and a different path in their career. Um, and then the reality is, is that when I started my career in tech, product management wasn't such a defined thing. There wasn't a clear role of a product management. So I feel like I was um, lucky to be part of that generation of people who had a chance to shape what product management is. Uh, my career started as part of my military service. I served in the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force, when I uh, uh, was 18. And wow. part of that um, part of that service, you don't really get to say what you want to do. They, they define what you're qualified for. And therefore, um, I got into the world of web uh, engineering, so software engineering, um, and it was a whole new world for me. I was not a techie girl. I did not, you know, take computer science or cyber in high school. So for me, it was discovering this whole new world of tech um, and doing that from the path of software engineering. Um, after my military service, I continued on that path because I had a career and it was, you know, it was quite fulfilling to be able to continue that journey. But soon enough, I realized that I'm more of a people person than a software person. So while as part of your role as a software engineer, you'll probably sit down and, and be hands-on uh, on the keyboard, you know, solving really important problems, but doing that more as an individual contributor capacity, um, I wanted to run around the hallways. I wanted <laughs> to work with all the stakeholders. I wanted to oh. talk with all the people. And that's how I... Uh, Within one of my uh, roles, uh, asked my CEO if it's okay if I'll do what my job is, plus a little bit of uh, product elements. And, Interesting. Uh, okay. my product management. That was many, many years ago, um, and I feel like I did the right choice. That's really fascinating. So you kind of took a situation that maybe you didn't really have a choice in the matter, but discovered a passion you didn't know that you had. And then when you did have more of a choice, you got to add in more of what you're passionate about. Um, that's great. So let's talk about that because one thing I really love about product management is all of the people that you get to work with. So tell me about that. Who is it? Um, if there's, whether it's a team or a role or position, who do you really love working with in this capacity? Yeah, so I, I would say that a product manager doesn't always have the same crew around them. They don't always work with the same function. It really depends on the company, the size of the company, the type of problem they're solving for, and the industry. Personally, I work for Assurian, and Assurian is such a large-scale company, right? It's, it's serving you know, hundreds of million people around the world. So there is a lot of different perspectives and stakeholders. Personally, I partner on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, with my uh, peers from marketing, from engineering, from design, UX design, data analytics, 
uh, our operational folks, people in the field. I'm lucky to work on an omni-channel product that has a software element and a physical element. So there's a lot of operations involved. Um, and even our uh, customer support folks, the folks that give the service, you know, as, a, as the first line for our consumers, working with them and hearing from them how people experience our products is just as important as working with the engineers that shape the futures with us. Um, so it's a very, very uh, diverse list of stakeholders and every day looks different. That's great. I've heard that a lot, that that's often what people love about product management is you can't get bored because every day is different. Yeah. So it sounds like you work with lots of different stakeholders, which I'm sure can be really interesting, but also maybe a little bit challenging. Is there something that you're, you're learning today from working with stakeholders that you might want to share with our audience? Yeah, I think there is, um, with my career, I discovered that one of the most important things as a product manager is always know your audience. And mm. it doesn't necessarily have to be the audience that you're solving the problem for, your, your segment, your personas that you're solving problems for, but it's also knowing the audience throughout the journey of creating a product. Um, in that journey of creating a product, there's different levels of maturity to that product. And maybe you'll have to find yourself explaining the exact same thing to five different stakeholders in five different ways throughout that journey. So knowing your audience is extremely important um, and also understanding that there is no one size fits all. And the way that I would get a buy-in from my legal partners is very different than the way I will get a buy-in from my B2B partners. Um, so it's very, very different. And the ability to flex ourselves in that situation and understand how do I get the buy-in from the stakeholders is critical in the success of a product manager. Yes, absolutely. Is there maybe a lesson that you learned, um, maybe even the hard way? <laughs> um, well, I would say with the years, I've um, I've kind of took to myself that uh, a question that I, it's really important for me to ask every stakeholder that I meet. Great. Um, and that question is, what keeps you up at night? If I know for every single stakeholder that I work with, what keeps them up, up at night? Or in other words, no matter what type of problems or solutions I'm going to bring to them, that's not necessarily what they're worried about. And if I know what they're worried about, I might do a better job as a partner and as a product manager. That is, a, I would say that's a priceless question. Um, and if we're not asking that question, we're probably missing out on something. That's a that's great advice to all of our uh, listeners to add that in their repertoire, or their their toolbox. And I'm sure that's what really helps you, as you were saying, work it work in the different ways that those stakeholders require. You're almost translating, you know, how how to say this to a legal stakeholder versus your marketing stakeholder, and having the answer to that question probably really enables you to do that more successfully. That's great. I love that. Thank you for, for that. And now kind of moving to um, really the passion behind this series is women in product management. And I love getting to shine spotlight on um, female executives such as yourself. So thinking back to, a, you know, a younger Shira who was not maybe knowing what she was getting herself into, what I've, what I've heard from um, so many women I talk to is Sometimes it's a mid-career change that brings them into product management. And sometimes it's, you know, something that they've been uh, developing their career path in product management for a while. But do you have some specific advice to women who, who are looking to break into product management, whether beginning of their career or if this is a, uh, a career change for them? Yeah, I would say uh, probably one of the best advice or maybe the insights that I have as a product manager is that it's not about what you learned in university and it's not about, you know, the academic background that you might have. Um, being a product manager is a personality thing. You are born a product manager. What, like it or not, you are born a product manager. Um, because a lot of the qualities that a product manager, a successful one, a rounded product manager brings to the table is passion and curiosity 
and the ability to rally up a team and the ability to influence without necessarily that reporting structure that all corporate loves, right? A product manager needs to find resourceful ways to make things happen. And that is a personality thing. So my advice to a lot of uh, people, especially women who want to get into product manager management and don't necessarily know how, is look within yourself and try to ask yourself, in your personal life, in your current role, do you apply the, the passion, the resourcefulness, the curiosity? Do you have creative ways of solving problems? Are you a good listener? All those traits are part of what you would need to put on a product management suit. And a product manager mm-hmm. suit is not the same suit in every organization. So also understanding and asking yourself what industry you're passionate about, what products you love, that is a good mm. entryway to a beginning of a product management career. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to take your existing passions and then apply them in product management. And I loved um, your list of those maybe innate skills that we have and never thought about how that could apply to product management. I think that really opens the door to product management to so many more people than, you know, people who may have studied you know, more technology, more technology focused um, topics in in school and college or university, as you say too. So that's that's a really good point. And- with women, I would say they might not even know, but there are so many products in their personal life they manage. And they build up from the ground. Um, they just don't call it a product. And they just don't realize it's that. But on the day-to-day, a lot of being a mom is doing that. Right. Ste- right. It's definitely managing stakeholders <laughs> and translating um, your your needs and, and meeting, meeting the needs of other people. A very difficult client. <laughs> right. Right. Keeping them happy. Um, that makes a lot of sense. Have you have you had that personal experience using your product management skills that you have developed outside of product management in other areas of life? Oh, I, I feel like the product manager in me is coming out in almost every single thing that I do. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm analyzing social situations, restaurant experiences, vacation services that I experience. I always look at it from a product management perspective and analyze, you know, how do I feel as a consumer? How is the brand? What is the brand benefiting from that? It's kind of in my head all the time. And it's good because it keeps my wheel spinning, even if I'm not solving the problems that I'm working on. Um, And it, it kind of um, expands my horizons into other ways of doing things in different industries. A lot of time, part of my role requires a lot of travel. So you'll find me a lot, you know, in airports and then, you know, hotels, you know, coming in at night, going to meetings, but you experience a lot of things and a lot of products on the way. And it keeps your product manager brain thinking all the time. Interesting. And likewise, you're able to take that or maybe can you share an example of how you were able to take your day-to-day life and bring that back into your uh, product management profession uh, role at Assurian? Yeah. Um, so one of the things that I'm responsible for at Assurian is also the customer experience, end-to-end customer experience. And traditionally, when you hear the words customer experience or you user experience, you think immediately about the UX, the things you see on a screen, where's the button, you know, the, the traditional customer experience. Yeah. But a customer experience really start and end from the moment the consumer has a problem all the way that to the moment we solve it. Um, the way that I bring my life into my role is a lot of time to give people examples from different industries, from different products that are not related at all to our, uh, to our product. My team would probably, um, you know, make fun of me and laugh about the fact that I always bring food analogies. <laughs> My examples are always related to food, how you cook the food, how oh. you uh, present the food. You know, it's always about food. So um, definitely, I would say the examples are how processes look like in other ind- industries. And maybe one thing, one good takeaway is 
when I'm creating a new product with my teams, when we're defining a new feature, a new functionality, um, there are three questions that I always ask myself and I expect my team to ask themselves as well. And those, those three questions are my understand, feel, do model. What does the user understand? What do they feel? And what do you want them to do? And that applies to every single moment in our life. If you walk into a restaurant, if you hop on a flight, if you order something on Amazon, there's always those three things you understand, feel, and do. And once you crack that in other moments in life, it is so much easier to crack it and your uh, professional uh, problems. That's great. I think I'm going to have to try that on my daughter tonight after school. <laughs> I think that might solve some, you know, dinner problems, as you mentioned, like so yeah. much being about food that could that could be a, that could be a real learning point. Um, I love that. Thank you so much. Is there anything else, Shira, that you would love to share today? Yeah, um, you know, there is this. It is, is the reality that we live in is that the tech industry is mostly male dominant. Um, now it's becoming less and less of an issue and diversity is such a big thing in most companies, but you still don't see enough strong, you know, talented women around the, around the table. Um, and most of the teams, especially in product management, because we work with engineering, it's, it's a balance that will take many more years to, to, mm -hmm. uh, to resolve. Nonetheless, um, I'm extremely passionate about giving women the stage to explore what product management could be. And I would love to encourage the women that are listening to, to the podcast or, or reading the materials to really think beyond their current role and try to ask themselves where they want to be in five years. Like, what is that vision? Like, what is the dream? And dream big. Nobody, nobody's, um, you know, Nobody can tell you how big you can dream or not. Um, and if you have that in mind, what is that first step you need to do to, to get there or to get closer to there? Um, I've seen at Assurian so many women that move from one department to another. Personally, I love hiring within the organization. You know, mm -hmm. I've hired somebody from the ops team who was all day long in the field, and now she's working solving problems for the exact same field. Um, so she's a subject matter expert and wow. a product management manager now. Uh, I've hired people from our training team. Um, and and to allow yourself to think that it's possible and to find the people that will help you get there is so important. And, you know, a lot of women... Um, I co-lead the women in product group at Assurian together with Yvette Johnson. She's also a vice president of product and oh, um, Kelly Kime. She's a VP of engineering. Um, and one of the biggest things that we encourage our, our um, the people in our community, the women in our community is to find a mentor. And a mentor could be somebody who helps ask those questions and challenge you until you get there. Yeah, that's that's great. That's so true. And to your point, it's especially in such a big company like Assurian, you could find that mentor, you know, in the next cubicle or in another department. And I just love hearing the advocacy that um, your executives have for women in in the company. And thank you for sharing that passion uh, today with us. Um, I love being able to share, you know. Uh, magnify the voice of female executives and being able to share their experiences. It was great to hear your um, advice for, for women considering product management for sure. So um, thank you for joining us today. And if you enjoyed uh, this conversation uh, to our listeners, don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for more empowering stories from the world of product management. Until next time, I'm Nicole Tish and this is Side Stories. Thank you for tuning in to Product Side Stories. I hope today's insights inspire you and propel your product journey forward. Remember, every challenge is a lesson waiting to be learned. Visit us at productside.com for more free resources like webinars, 
templates, playbooks, and other product wisdom we've packaged for you. I'm Nicole Tish, and until next time, keep innovating, keep leading, and keep creating stories worth sharing.